shows. Yeah, we found I was, happy shows. <laughs> I was thinking, where co-directors, our sister podcast, is very, very dark. Apart from the next couple, which are lighter. Um, this is where we come for our, our happy space now. Which has been lacking <laughs> of Ooh. late. Definitely, definitely, yeah. I've still got a little bit of a cold, so I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit, you know, uh, well, rubbish. It sounds like that. Thanks very much. Um, which show should we start with on this Strong Lady special? Uh, give me a glow. <laughs> okay, I have made notes on glow because this is how professional this podcast has become since we realised we have over six hundred downloads. Yeah. I I still just watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> we are rocketing up the charts <laughs> to literally nowhere. <laughs> right. So, what is Glow, please? Um, it is a show about wrestling. What does Glow stand for? Fuck. Gorgeous <laughs> ladies of wrestling. That's the it one. It doesn't. It doesn't stand for fuck. Yeah, there's not enough F's in it. <laughs> um. Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't start how I expected, because I was like, "Oh, it'll just be they're casting this wrestling roster." Mm-hmm. But it starts with an actress who's just like, "I'm not very good." Well, maybe, <laughs> like, yeah, no, she's just struggling. Like, she can't find any work, and she's just moaning that there are no parts for her, essentially. Quite rightly, and I think the, yeah. the opening scene, I think, is a real. I've written this. It's a real good microcosm of, you know, women in the entertainment industry. So she goes through this audition, and then she's told at the end, "You're reading the man's part." And I think that's absolutely in a micro. This is the show setting out its stool. So it basically said, "Right, you've come in here. You've taken." She says, "It's the better part." And goes, yeah, no shit, because it's for the man. So it's the show is basically saying this is where glow comes from because there is you know there's no good parts for women in Hollywood or TV other than the wife or the secretary and team goes to fuck it goes as far as you know I don't want to play someone's secretary I don't want to play someone's housewife or whatever I think she doesn't seem that keen on doing the wrestling thing either but she just needs needs to do something yeah so yeah, so she does this audition. She goes, she hears of another audition of a show that's you know looking for unconventional women. And as soon as that they said that on screen, I wrote down, you know, I bet they're completely normal women. And in this show, unconventional at the time, you know, unconventional is shorthand for bold and outspoken and opinionated. What you might call a strong woman, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think I took that as more of a just a you're not like classic TV pretty, essentially. Because this was the 80s. Well, set in not, the 80s. Not TV what? Pretty? Did you say? Yeah, not TV pretty. The thing is, she's, she's quite pretty. Like, how? what do you have to look like if she can't get the job, you know? Well, no, that's the thing, because I'm thinking, because this is the 80s and it's America, then that's just sort of like tall, leggy blonde. That's it. Yeah. They don't want anything else. Yeah. Which is why her friend's just like, I don't understand why you're struggling to get work. And it's like, well, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so she goes to this audition which she so uh, yeah that's where it introduced to Sam who's played by Mark Maron and I, I struggle with Mark Maron I used to like him but have you listened to his podcast at all no he has done one of the best podcasts that has ever been released he because what he does a sort of an interviewish style thing so he has he's got a studio in his house I think so people come down like famous comedians and actors and all that sort of people he talks to all sorts of people um Barack Obama went and did a podcast from his his studio, and I listened to it again last year while obviously you know Trump's being in office, and just listening to Obama speaking, I was like, for fuck's sake, why can't we go back to those days <laughs> when shit was like you know you could you could at least respect the people in power. 
that. But yeah, no, that is genuine. If, even if if nothing else, I don't particularly like Mark Maron anymore. But if nothing else, you should really go and listen to his podcast with Barack Obama. It's incredible. And the after the post show, they have a sort of so he goes down. They do the interview. They go away. He then does like a post show with his producer, and that's really interesting as well. Yeah, I mean, luckily we don't have a producer. It's just us. Technically, we do because we are the producers, but also we don't have a head of state. <laughs> True, and I, I don't think that would go well. Like, oh, so what TV show have you been watching? Oh, well, these are political TV shows. Uh, we're watching House of Cards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've already done House of Cards. Yeah, we? I know. Yeah, but we that was to. before yeah. um, Spacey Gate. <laughs> Wasn't it around? The, no, it was around the same time. Because I think we were was talking it? about how. Yeah, how much how weird it was to watch Kevin Spacey in a thing, on purpose. Well, I imagine that's going to come up in co-directors in the not too distant future. Ah, yes, probably. <laughs> Wait, I say the not too distant future because of the schedule that we've created. I now don't know when that's coming out. So, um, uh, I don't know when we did um, House of Cards. Was it series two? Did it? Um, yeah, all three. Oh yeah, series two, episode six. That's when we did House of Cards with Designated Survivor, which was a much more entertaining show. Yeah, which I, that reminds me, I still need to watch the rest of the second season of that. Designated Survivor? Yeah, I just kind of Mate. forgot about it. <laughs> the, the list of shows that I need to watch, <laughs> even doing this, is ridiculous. Like, like we did Vikings in series one, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I still haven't. And you have you have you started Black Sales yet? The DVD that you bought, Blu-ray no. you bought. <laughs> no, I haven't. We'll get I haven't. I haven't kept watching Channel Zero either. <laughs> well, we did. We nearly finished it. <laughs> um. Oh. Okay. So yeah. So she goes to Ruth. This is um goes to um this audition with Sam, who's played with Mark Marin, who's. Girls had Barack Obama's podcast. Yeah, I mean, um, her highlight of the, going to this wrestling thing was just like, at least it's not porn, because <laughs> that's one of the things that was suggested. She was just like, "Have you ever thought about doing erotica?" And it was like, I was like "Is that, that, is that the, the only, only other option?" Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I thought something as a. Because we meet all these the the other women who are auditioning for this wrestling show that uh, Mark Maron oh fuck no Sam <laughs> is putting together. There is a woman who it would appear um, when she gives her headshot over to Sam, it would appear she identifies as a wolf. And I've got a funny feeling I've heard somewhere that the actress herself identifies as a wolf, and it's not just a character thing. Let me just do a bit of quick research, and I'll consult with our um, That's research interesting. department. Like I've... Well, yeah, you mean Google. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. I might have got this completely wrong, and it, uh, or even it's, you know... It's utter bottom. Uh, the thing is, I'd have, I'd have no idea. I don't even know what her character name was. <laughs> uh, her character name is... Uh, she, well, she goes on to become Sheila the She Wolf. Um, I think it's um, probably bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I heard that, but I guess you know. Yeah, I guess it just got misconstrued in like the fact that there is a character who identifies as a wolf. Yeah, that was uh, an in- interesting point in the show, and I was just like I don't. Why? <laughs> well, just why not? Yeah, I suppose they're looking for unconventional people, women. She was in a film in 2013 called Frank the Bastard. <laughs> now I want to watch it. <laughs> She's in The Greatest Showman. Maybe as a she wolf. I don't know. But yeah, so then it's, it's, yeah, they, Sam tries to get them all to learn how to wrestle with the help of. Um, is he a wrestler himself? Or is he just related to a, a wrestler? Oh, uh, he's a wrestler. Well, in real life, he's an actual wrestler. Um, what's his name? What's his name? I know. I'm just judging this by the fact that, like, uh, my flatmate was just super into it because we he we he liked wrestling. And was oh, like, really? Yeah, and he was just like, "Oh, that's uh, fucking what's his name? I don't care." 
<laughs> but yeah, so it's cool that they've got like actual wrestlers on there, but I don't really think you can <laughs> just teach people to wrestle. Because one of the first things they were doing was like a hair pull flip thing. And I was like, Yeah. How? <laughs> do you, like, you've shown them once and gone, now you do it. Just, I feel that would be quite easy. You know, but I grew up on a trampoline, so you know, throwing myself over in a front flip wouldn't be too much of an issue. I could totally be the next champion of the WWE. Yeah, but um, then the thing they've been shown <laughs> once, <laughs> and then just are expected to do it. It's like okay. Then when they can't, but the, the when Ruth does the fucking okay, what's our backstory to this hair flip? Like, what I don't know what you're talking about. Like, oh, there's got to be a reason. This is an acting job. We have to have a backstory as to why we're having this fight. It's just this really awful acting bit. The thing is, I can see her point in that, like, but I think at this point they're just testing the, the like athletic ability. Yeah. I but, mean, but that, it will come because obviously you know wrestlers come up with gimmicks, and there are you know in inverted commas um, storylines to wrestling. So she's grasping the right idea, but just maybe a bit too early. Maybe, maybe running before she can walk. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously, yeah, for that she gets just booted because Sam's just like, I don't give a shit, fuck off. <laughs> um, but and then obviously, she gets mugged by some kids. I was expecting to start like fucking head flipping them, and I thought that's where it was going. Is she actually then takes them out? Thinks, yeah, like oh, Sam like what. steps out and like sees her like beat the shit out of all these kids, and I was like, yeah, oh that's how she gets in. Uh, but then she just gets mugged, <laughs> and it's like. Oh okay, <laughs> I guess your pretty friend will come to help. <laughs> I think I think she's more than pretty friend. <coughs> oh excuse me. Oh uh, yeah, Debbie. I mean the the wife of the man that you're sleeping with will come and help you. So here's the thing, right? So she sleeps with her best mate's husband. Then halfway through this audition, Debbie comes in and is like, "I can't believe you slept with my husband." And while I was watching, I was thinking. Is this is this an act? Is this an act to try and get Ruth a part in this show? I was like, or is this genuine? And then I thought, actually, that's so again to use the word microcosm. It's a microcosm of what it's like watching wrestling when you're a kid because you're sort of half thinking, oh no, I've heard rumours this isn't real, and then you're looking at people and they're like, oh, he's kicking him in the head. That's real. So you just it's kind of this playful way of just being a bit. You know, it's just the, the whole kayfabe, they call it. You know, when they have to uphold this idea that it's real when it's, in fact, not. And I, I couldn't decide. And by the end of the episode, we know it's not actually any clearer as to whether or not Debbie's thought, fuck it, I'll either A, go for it, B, help you get it, or C, this is a real fight. So I, I mean, it's, that I think it's definitely a real fight. Do you think? Because, yeah, she was sleeping with her husband. Well, that is true. Because yeah, like the I think like halfway through the episode, she like he breaks so, the window. Yeah, some guy just like turns up and is like, "Do you want to bang?" And she's just like, "Do you want to cheat on your wife?" And he's like, "Yes." <laughs> That's why I climbed in the window. But they never explained that who no. the wife is. Um, when he was coming through the window, I could I didn't quite catch his face correctly, and I was like. Fucking Marshall from How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> he stood up and oh right, no, he's he's really not. <laughs> um I quite like the show. I, I quite enjoyed it was, the pilot. It was fine. <laughs> like I'm not I guess because you're you like wrestling. So I, I, think... I did I went through a bit of a, a phase in, when we were at uni. We I had a mate, Chris, um, who he really is a huge wrestling nut. And he came around and, and we were watching some DVDs. I'm like, shit, this is actually cool. It all stemmed because, do you remember, I got that PS3 off my brother and then we went to CEX and I bought a wrestling game because it was yeah. the first wrestling thing I had. You know, I played, what was it, like WWF Smackdown or something on PS1? Something yeah, like that, yeah anyway. that's the one I played. I played the shit out of that. Like, I yeah. liked wrestling when I was a kid. I'm just not that interested in it anymore. Yeah, no. And I think this show to... needs you to be at least somewhat interested in the show like in wrestling yeah I think because I, I, I can't I came imagine away with this and I was just like eh like it was like yeah it was fine like there's nothing wrong with it it's just not for me 
yeah, I can't imagine that non wrestling fans get a huge amount out of it. Yeah, no, Ben loved it. I was loving it. I was just like, cool, you can watch this on your own. <laughs> <laughs> but Alison Brie, I think, is fantastic. And have you seen Community? I'm pretty sure. Have we done the pilot for Community? I don't I feel think like we have, we... actually. Have we not? Oh my god. She is amazing in that, as is Donald Glover. Um, but, you know, in my eyes, he can do no wrong. So, are you sure we've not done community? Cause... I'm pretty sure we haven't, no. Okay, because I, I, we, Lisa and I watched a lot of it. Lisa can't remember any of it. But, yeah, we watched a lot of community. Um, and she's amazing in it. Yeah, no, like, she... yeah, for me, it was just more that, like, yeah, I just didn't, I don't really care about wrestling. So I was like, mm. I do want. I'd, I'd be interested to hear what like hardcore wrestling fans think of it. If, you know, because it's not it's not painting wrestling in any bad light or anything. Not, you know, this far it's not anyway. So, well, yeah, that's yeah, that's the thing. You can sort of just go because if you try, if anyone sort of goes, oh, you sort of like that's not how wrestling works anymore. You're like, no, it's set in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> they're not. Yeah, I think yeah, it's just not for me. Like it's totally fine. Like I, like I would if I wouldn't turn it off if it was on, but like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I got to be honest. I don't think I'm going to continue with it, but I did like what I saw. Sorry, I got a bit of ice in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the best. <laughs> um, shall we move on to? Yes. What I predict is going to be in your top five. Yes. I like this year, the marvellous Mrs. Maisel. So, uh, full disclosure, I think if you've listened to us for a while, I think it, it's quite apparent how much we are massive fans of Gilmore Girls. Oh, that's, that, I mean, that's the first time we've mentioned them this year. Fuck off, is it? Oh, no, oh, I doubt it. <laughs> um... But yeah, so of course when Amy Sherman Palladino makes a new TV show, we we're gonna be fairly biased towards this, I think. And the fact that it's about I don't yeah, I don't think it's that. I think it's genuine. Just because like, even if I watched this good. not knowing that it was Sherman I think you Palladino, could, I, I'd have been I, like, this feels like Gilmore Girls. I think because we and also it's set it's set in Gilmore like because well. Gilmore Girls is set. In a small town near ish New York. So you get a lot of like New Yorker sort of like like the speed at which they speak. Like yes. you can tell this um Sherman Palladino. <laughs> Just yeah, because most 100%. of the characters talk fast and are funny. Yeah, hundred percent. And the fact that it's about stand up. Yeah. Uh, you're ticking like all sorts of boxes for yeah. us there. <laughs> right. So here we go. Marvellous Mrs. Maisel. Is maybe the best show in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, like, I would love to be like, oh, here's what I think of it critically, but I'm just like, no, this You're is just gonna gush. This is perfect. Like, I, uh, yeah, yeah, because like we, I was into stand up. I was about to say before I was into TV, but that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of. I watched a lot more stand-up than I did TV shows for a long time. But, and then it also, it's an interesting time to say it's like post-war America. Yeah, no, it's just. Well, it's pretty much just the stand-up is becoming a big cultural phenomenon. Like, if if you're a comedy nerd, this is. You absolutely have to have to watch. So, um, there's a so Mrs. Basil. Basically, she is supporting her husband, who is he works in an office. He's not entirely sure what his job is either. Um, See, that's the thing. I love I, wants I, to, like with the, like the cold opening, the whole like this is our wedding day, and she's giving the speech. I was like, oh, this is a flash forward. She's gonna be yeah, a stand up by this point. Because yeah, I was like, no, this is just her that's first. just like. And I was like, oh, you're not... 
why aren't you a comedian yet? Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. It, it just from the outset, it makes sense that she becomes a comedian. Yeah, like she, she just she exudes to. humor, and like it's weird because her. I don't know how much it's in the pilot. Oh uh, yeah, again, full disclosure, I've watched the first season. <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched uh, this. On, I started wait, watching wait, this two days ago. I was gonna say we watched it. Uh, well, the weekend just gone, which for us was literally two days ago. Yeah, I watched it. So I watching it Sunday, midday ish, and just by we it. within twelve hours, I was like, "Oh yeah, no, I finished season one." But I don't know how much she shows in the pilot. But her family are funny as well. Well, her dad is funny. Uh, the only person around her that isn't funny is Joel, the one who wants to be a stand-up. <laughs> yeah, which is is quite it is quite tragic that he's the only one that absolutely isn't going to um, get anywhere. With yeah, I mean to be fair, he could if she wrote his jokes. Well, that's what I thought it might be: is that he, she then writes the material, he then goes up and does it, and she's sort of in the wings in the background, like, "Well, this is my material. I, I should be getting the credit for it." And then the resentment builds up, the relationship breaks down, and then she then takes the stage. As it happens, he bombs one night, decides it's her oh, fault. Oh yeah, no, it's because he and fucks off. Like he's he's ripped off like a Bob set Newhart. of Bob Newhart. And then it's sort of like, and she comes to him and she's like, Bob Newhart's doing your bit. And he's just, I'm like, ah, oh, Midge. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Oh. You're looking through the telescope the wrong way around. <laughs> yeah. And then um, he's just like, oh no, everyone, everyone. I think he calls it borrows. Everyone steals, yeah. Borrows, and he's just steals. like, yeah, everyone borrows when they're starting out. And I'm like, probably fair. Like, that's a fair, but not the whole set. <laughs> and he's like, I put my own spin on it. And she's like, you slowed it down. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me tell you something real quick. Um, I think I must have been about nine or ten. Um, but uh, so I'm, I was watching Mrs. Maisel. Joel does this material. This is a phone call from uh, Abraham Lincoln, and he was like, blah 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 blah. I turned to Lisa and I said, that's weird because that sounds like a Bob Newhart routine. And she said, who's Bob Newhart? So then, rewind, I'm nine years old. Um, I'm flicking through, see, I used to do this a lot when I was a kid. I was bored, looking for a film or something to watch. I was flicking through my parents' DVDs and CDs, come across this CD, and pull this double CD out. It's called Bob Newhart, something like this. And I listened to that, and that is the... F- I, I, clear as that I remember this that is the first interaction I'd ever had with stand up comedy is listening to Bob Newhart so when this comes out and he's doing Bob Newhart's routine I'm like I've fucking heard this that's great because I like I'm my comedy like nerd very much stretches back to about the 80s at most I think and that's really just Billy Connolly (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then it's like some older Jack D stuff and I'm like but no, my I got into comedy through Graham Norton. I watched his TV show when it was on every night at channel on Channel Four, and then one night they were just showing um, live at the Roundhouse, like his oh, his stand up show. His stand up show. I think I have that somewhere. Yeah, like it's it's Is that great. Where he gives away the pink phone halfway through the the, yes. sh- the set. Yeah, yeah. I like, and the, but the thing is, like, I remember starting to watch that, and my first laugh from that came about 10 seconds after he walked on stage where he just walks out and just goes uh we're live at the roundhouse uh something 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 but the joke is that like he's gay (laughs) (laughs) and the Uh, vent as well the the funniest of the jokes (laughs) yeah like I mean, he's the punchline. It's f- like it, he tells it a lot better than I do because <laughs> yeah, I haven't I, I haven't watched that in a long time. <laughs> but yeah, so then um, the, the fact that he then it goes oh right, and then Bob Newhart's on telly, and I was looking at Lisa, and I was like, I fucking know Bob. I know all his fucking routines, right? All his big ones. They're fucking oh. So yeah, I was I was in fucking seventh heaven watching this. Then fucking Lenny Bruce shows up. <laughs> It's like, all right, okay, so she bails Lenny Bruce out of jail. So then I was like, 
Right, if Lenny Bruce is in this and Bob Newhart's in this, did she actually exist? And I was really gutted to find out that she didn't actually exist. But I'm very happy that she's been created. Yeah, it's almost like a sort of slight alternate history thing where it's like just plopping someone into like real events and putting like sort of real-ish like, because I'm imagining they're probably not going to be like, this is exactly how they were in real life, but putting these recognisable names into like because it's another one where you just accept that this is how the world is like, it, I suppose like with some of the other shows where they just kind of go oh yeah, no, this is just where they live like, just fucking work it out like, this is easier because it is New York, which is fairly famous. You've been there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Fuck but, yeah, no, but this... So, so the, the, her <laughs> relationship so with her husband... <laughs> her relationship with her husband breaks down. She gets drunk, goes to the comedy club, and just gets on stage and delivers a set that most comedians dream of writing and honing and refining and performing hundreds of times before you finally get it right and she just fucking does it and it's brilliant it's genuinely brilliant yeah like it's just so like even when he's breaking up with her and he just goes did you ever think you were supposed to be something and you suddenly realise you're not and she just goes yes yeah, married, married. <laughs> <laughs> and then he leaves and it's just like fucking killed me that did oh my yeah. god and, like, and then so she's good. just like on this spiral into comedy which is I'm going to be honest if I was looking at probably getting divorced at some point my first instinct wouldn't be I know what I'm going to do to do comedy I think mine would be get a dog I mean for that I'd, I'd join in on the first I'd be like I'm going to get drunk oh yeah I'd get drunk by a dog then go do some comedy but with it seems the dog like in tow that, she does so much in that night where she's yeah. just still drunk and she's just like going around making all these like appointments and like being like, oh, you know, I'm going to get this going and then just kind of wakes up like, did I show everyone my tits? <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, uh, like, I'm... I I love Midge as a character because yeah. she's got this in, like incredible mind for comedy. But for a lot of things, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> she just goes, I oh, know I got bailed out on the night I was arrested, so I don't need to go to court. And she's like, nah. <laughs> That's not how this works. Oh, wait, is that in this episode? That's definitely not in the pilot. <laughs> well, no, she does. She gets arrested in this episode. Yeah, but she I think... gets t- taken off stage. They're, those cops are there very quickly, I thought. Like, suspiciously quickly. For something I, know, that, they, like, I don't know if they explain it in this on. episode or in maybe the next episode that they just hang around outside clubs to arrest people for stand up well it's ludity and all that nonsense yeah bullshit yeah but then she's just sort of like I love her talk with Lenny in the police station after she bails him out yeah it's just like do you love and he's just like no I would do literally any other job but this is the one I'm good at and she's and it's just go, do you love but it? do you love it? And he just does that like shrug, and it's like, uh, and like yeah, maybe. get go do the stand up. Oh, but then, yeah, like, I she bet. just sort of leaves it and goes, "No, nah, I'm actually just gonna return to my life a bit." That's not in the pilot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is the whole talk with Susie not in the pilot? Uh. Oh no! Yeah, no. She has a she has a chat with Susie, and Susie says that she's got that. You know, in fifteen years of running the gaslight, I have, you know, uh, twice, I've been sure that a comedian's been brilliant. One of them was Mort Sol, who I actually don't know. So that's something to go and look away, uh, go away and look up. And the second one being her. So I I I can't wait to carry on watching this, and obviously I'm going to carry on watching this because it's oh, Amy Sherman. You have like, yes. Also, like, it's it is weird to see the voice of Lois on screen again. That was... Yeah, yeah, that's always. Although I, I feel like she's, it's less noticeable the more I see her like in stuff that isn't Family Guy. 
Yeah, well, I mean, because you don't see her in Family Guy. No, but um, she and was also, in the yeah, pilot was, for Gilmore Girls. Yeah, so. she was in yeah a lot of episodes of Gilmore Girls as well, and I'm like... Well, she was originally going to be Suki, wasn't she? I, yeah, there's like a little bit of me that's like, wait, are we going to get more characters? <laughs> like, more people who are in Gilmore Girls in this as well, just in case? Uh, yeah, there's a gay French concierge. <laughs> He's coming in. <laughs> a guy who owns the coffee shop across the road and wears a hat backwards. Yeah, that's the thing. I want that. <laughs> like, is what I you're just, saying basically you want more Gilmore Girls? Oh, well, no. I just want more sort of like just one episode like sort of cameos from like those characters because they're so funny as well. Mm. Like, it could just be like walking off a stage having just delivered a joke. Like, that would be fine. But no, you, you're going to you. I have already declared my love for this show. Um. I just kind of wish that I has now had seven seasons of it to get through, like I did with Gilmore Girls, instead yeah. of just the, the two. two? Oh, yes, yeah, two. The second series only just came out, I think. Oh, shit. That I might means be... I'm going to have to wait a long time. <laughs> well, not so long, I don't. I guess it's probably like once a year. Yeah. Uh, second season premiered on 5th of December 2018, so yeah, it's only just come out. Oh, it's gonna be. I, that means I'm gonna have to. Once I finish it, I'm gonna have to wait nearly. A, I, could, I wonder how many times I could watch this in a year. Knowing you, probably quite a few. <laughs> how many I can just rotate between series? this and Gilmore Girls. Uh, ten. So ah, yeah, easily cool. doable in a day. Yeah. But yeah, fucking brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. If this isn't in our top five, my top five. Sorry, we've had a fucking brilliant year. And I've um, if this isn't in my top five, episodes. I've I've died. <laughs> like, I, I'm I'm calling it now. This is probably going to be my number one of the year. You don't know what's coming. You don't know what's coming. You might really I'm, like. I'm looking at what's coming. Flash from 1990. <laughs> you know, actually, I might. <laughs> I tell you what. You actually, genuinely, Killing Eve. You might really, really like because it's fucking banging. But am I going to might like it more than the TV show? Yeah, probably not. The <coughs> the oh, Sherman Palladino show about comedy. I don't think I'm ever going to like anything this much again. <laughs> <laughs> that includes any future children I might have. <laughs> well, they're all going to be named after characters from either this or Gilmore Girls. <laughs> this is my son, Bob Newhart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a. Uh, this is Luke. <laughs> This is lame. Um, that's a girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I know. But she came out, there was a baseball cap, and I was like, huh, Luke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I was amazed with that. This absolutely wins. And on a different week, if we put Glow against something else, I reckon we'd probably talk more favorably about Glow, but Glow didn't have a chance with this. No. I Also, I think I made the mistake, because I knew how much I was going to like yeah. Marvelous and Prince Maisel. Because like, my sister's been going for like months, just like, oh, have you watched this? And I'm like, no, it's on the fucking list. Well, she's I mean, like, she's oh, like, yeah, no, it's really good. And I was like, yeah, I, I know who writes it. It's going to be <laughs> fucking... Why is it so far away? <laughs> Lisa's been making um, similar complaints. It's like, when are you doing Marvel's Miss Maisel? And she looked at the time and was like, oh, it's only five weeks. I was like, yeah, we're doing shows in between those now as well. So it's more like a little bit later than that. She's like, fuck's sake. <laughs> and the other week's like, are hey, you got to it yet? Yeah. And I was like, well, not not quite yet. So fuck it now. When are we gonna watch? <laughs> but I'm glad we did. Yeah. Oh, no, it's Overwatch is just updated on the PTR. Ah, new era. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry. Carry on. Yeah. No. This. Um, like. Yeah. I think Glow is a good show, but not for me. Yeah. Uh, Marvelous Miss Maisel is my new favorite television show. So. <laughs> Stop <Stockholm. laughs> Yeah, it's. It, I think Glow would have done. That's the thing. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what. I can't think of anything that we could pair it with. That it would definitely be. Oh, do you know what it would have been? Entourage. <laughs> to be fair, it's not really a competition, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it would be in the. Fuck the thing is, I think I I feel bad when there's like a show that I know that we love, oh, or are going to love, and I'm like, oh, poor other show. <laughs> You're gonna get like ten minutes, and then it's gonna be 
30 or 40 minutes of us just loving another show. <laughs> I think we right. got a fair run. Yeah, no, we did. But it's... I can't remember. What did we do with him and her? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that was... That was uh, that was drowned as well. Him and her, we did that weird... That was Modern Family, wasn't it? Fucking hell. Uh, do you have to look them up to remember? Because I really do. Um, Some of them. Him and her was... Uh, yeah, him and her was only episode three. Yeah, Series and then we just <laughs> we just gushed about it, and the same thing happened with Gilmore Girls. Yeah, oh yeah. And now, now this. Fuck me, it's good. Oh. Now, anyway. now I get to you get to give me. Um, we'll return the Paladino updates, where you just <laughs> tell me how far through this you are. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean we're we're watching Russian Doll at the minute, and that's that's shaping up to be. Fucking excellent as well. Oh fuck that off and watch this. <laughs> <laughs> right, next week. Not next week. Next episode, which is coming out on the twentieth of March. Well, yes. This is the first the first of our um what should we call it? Brexit versus the wall series of UK versus US. <laughs> I, I mean, to be fair, I thought UK versus US was quite a good name. Yeah, it makes more sense. <laughs> it's, it's succinct. Yeah, so as I think we've previously mentioned this, uh, we're going to do a few, over the course of this series, um, there's a few shows that have been made in UK versions and uh, US versions. So our next episode marks the beginning of that, and it is going to be Shameless. Shameless. Which is something you've watched, the UK version and the US? Yes. Okay. I I've actually, I, re- I like I like both. I'm interested to see if there's one that you prefer. I'm intrigued to see how they do it because, like, I. Anyway, yeah, no, we'll we'll leave the discussion for the episode. But I'm looking forward to watching both, you know, the UK one and seeing how it. Yeah, I'll be. I'm interested to see, like, to hear someone with fresh eyes looking at Shameless because I watched it when it came out in like, uh, 2003 or something. Oh shit! I think it was. 2004 so you know I was uh, 14 well no 13 I was like 13 14 when I started watching that probably not the right age (laughs) but um, yeah no so that's next and then the next actual voices that you'll hear from us are talking about Christopher Nolan yeah oh we also um, we uncover a huge conspiracy theory surrounding the films of Christopher Nolan Oh, I've forgotten about that. Yeah. That was great. No, it's, it's, that's a banger. I really liked that episode. <laughs> so yeah, go listen yeah. to that on co-directors. Yep. It's good fun. Oh, I guess that's that then. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> we got the rabbi! <laughs> <laughs>